if they will say, okay, but what do we do with it? My God, there are easy technological solutions and so on. Don't tell me this is a serious problem, you know. Yeah. It's, I think that they must know secretly that if they will lose this battle, others will follow and so on. Yeah. They know, you know, they There's know. A fear there. Yeah, there, you know, all canny politicians, and they are not all idiots, they are idiots, but when they have to care <laughs> for their own interests, they are not idiots. Yes. There they know. They know that, you know, like you demand from me something which is not a lot. But I know, if I can give you this. But if I can give you this, I will have you to have do it. other things yes. more. So, and this is why you have to win this one. This can be done. Yeah. I mean, because uh, here again, those pragmatists are lying, I think. Who <laughs> say, no, it's too fast. No, it can be done very fast. It's easy to do. And the, the, the problem, and then you can keep them. So no, there's I, a new person who wants to... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm delayed. Yeah. My name is uh, Dr. Y. Moses and I am one of the core team huh? members of uh, SKA. Huh? Yes. We got delayed because of the yes. fog and all fog. the things. Yes, this oh, yeah. yeah. from Bangalore. Yeah. Ah, from, yeah, from Bangalore, yes. You know, you are, pop, no, you, the city, you, this is the India, yeah. the way it lies it to is see itself in the West. Yes. Bangalore, all those programmers, yeah. but it should be expensive hotels. <laughs> yeah. That's the India we Europeans sympathize yeah. with. All those program writers, you know, and so on. <laughs> Actual thing is what we have, we have come back again, we'll go. Uh, uh, people now also telling that, who is forcing the scavenger to do this? Like that uh, authority said, we are, uh, I am authorizing you to voluntarily to sign like. Yeah, yeah. It is the yeah. same way here but this also. Is the, but the, and this is a big problem today. You so know, now even you know where you are connected with other struggles now. The same problem is now in the United States, where I don't have any illusions about Obama. But yeah. why is he so much under attack for this health care plan? Again, people are resisting saying he's taking our freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. But what freedom of choice do you have under the present system. It's the same mm. as you. Of mm. course, mm. formal, you have a freedom of choice. What? To die, to starve, or what? So, such a lot is manipulated today by this freedom of choice, you know? People should learn that in order to have a freedom of choice, you have to have many things which function, state mm. power, mm. traditions, and so on and so on. It, a lot is being, again, that's the problem today. Yes. Yes, they always can tell you, okay, you're not satisfied, go, or whatever, yes. no? But yeah. uh, Avijit has a few kind of reflections on this whole thing. Sorry. So he will take an interview you wanted to with ask him. him yeah. I, I, I will go us. out of this. You can. No, no, you don't need no, to. No. You be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, yeah, yeah, yeah you can disconnect. No, 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 I have to disconnect, sir. Otherwise, it is a problem for her. No, no, no. Look at this. Too much sound. Practice there. This kind of, uh, no, law or those in power systematically violating their own rules and so on. What interests me is how, uh, uh, first, what interests me is ideology, not as big ideological theories, projects, but ideology penetrating daily life. How you go to the toilet, how you cook, all that stuff, how you walk on the streets. For example, in Europe we are we don't admit it, but we have the same. For example, I read a wonderful analysis of how, in a modern kitchen even, how the way you dispose, where is the, where is the, how do you call it, where do you cook the... Uh, the, the garbage. No, no, what is the mechanism with which you cook the... The stove, the stove, where is the stove, where is the wash basin and so on. It's not just technology, it's the whole ideology is in it, in what stage, how. So this is what always fascinated me. Once this first, this everyday level of ideology in our daily practices. Second thing which interests me is this duality of the law. How, you know, for me, in, in human civilization as such, you never have simply orders, prohibitions, and then you violate them or not. For example, I don't know, for me, a culture always functions in a more complex way. Like, I don't know how it is with you here, for example, but in Europe. Let us say we compete for the same job. You win. In, if we are friends in Europe, it's usual politeness to do what? 
You tell me, listen, we are friends, I know you deserve job more than me, so I step down so that you can the job. You made me this offer, but it's well understood that yeah, I will, will say, refuse. no, no, I will refuse. Mm. But although it's nonsense, but we have to go through this. You know what I mean? So, uh, and uh, here we can do, for example, uh, for example, another anecdote from my past. Uh, when in our communism there were elections, they were not as bad as communist in Soviet Union, <coughs> but the communists didn't get like under Stalin 99%, uh -huh. but they got like 80% always, so everybody knew who will win and so on. So I was member of some small student newspaper, a little bit dissident, and we said, what should we do to annoy those in power? We printed a special issue of our newspaper, not directly attacking they're not saying these were not really free elections. Everybody knew this. It would be, we did something much more cunning. We said they are saying these are free elections, so let's treat them as if they are free elections. So we published on the evening of the elections a big front page where we just said, you know, latest news, it looks as if communists will remain in power. Everybody knew, but you know, we treated this as real news. As if there was a chance that they will lose power and then, and they were so furious, they called us to the central committee of the party and shouted at us. And we simply told them, wait a minute, you said that these are free elections, we treated them as free elections. What's the problem? And it's so interesting, the guy couldn't tell us, listen, you know we couldn't lose the election, why did you try? He just told us, listen. Don't mess with me. You know very well what I'm talking about. And we said, please, what are you talking about? He said, don't mess with me. You know what? You know what I mean? We got, and it works like this. So this is what fascinates me. All these rules, obscene, secret rules, how, as, you know, there are usually people focus only on rules, regulations, which are meant to be violated, like many sexual prohibitions. When father tells you don't mess with women, it means really do it but discreetly or what, no? At least in patriarchal society. But what interests me much more is the opposite <coughs> mechanism. You are, you are told, make a choice, but in reality it means you are given a freedom to make a choice only if you make the right choice, the choice that I want, you know? There's something very confused in these mechanisms, how you are apparently given a freedom or to go even further. It's not only that something is prohibited to do, but you have even publicly to deny the prohibition. And here I think you work a little bit in this way. You are, the system wants you, caste system, limited to your caste and so on. But uh, you are not even allowed to say this publicly. You must behave as if publicly, everything's okay, we are all equal, you know. This nice irony that, how should I put it, prohibition itself is prohibited. You are not only subordinated, but you must act as if you are free. Mm -hmm. And this is typical of our <laughs> capitalist drama. All, drama. all the drama and so on, and this is what interests me here. The, the I know.